Hello there, I am Sarah from Inkno, here to give you a quick tutorial and some useful tips for Microsoft Teams. During all these new teaching adjustments, video conferencing is here to keep teachers and students connected and learning. If you are already using Office 365, Teams is a great resource for getting in touch and continuing to teach face-to-face -face with your students. To use Teams, first you have to register for an account over at teams.microsoft.com. To use Microsoft Teams in full capacity, you should have an Office 365 account. But if you don't have, you can just create one quickly from the Microsoft website. Then sign in and register for Teams. Once the sign-in or registration is complete, you will be prompted to download the desktop application. So I have my account registered and the application downloaded, so that is what you can see here. You can continue to use the web browser if you prefer, but the desktop application will support all the features of Teams. If you are joining an existing organization, you will be integrated right into their Teams infrastructure when you sign in with that email. But if you are the first one to be using Teams, once you get logged in, you can invite people to join your team by just emailing them a quick link that Microsoft provides you. There is so much that you can do with Microsoft Teams, as you can see here. The first tab on the side ribbon, the Activity tab, houses everything that has occurred, all your calls, chats, and files that have been uploaded across all your teams. At the top, you can filter how you view all your activity. Next up is the chat tab. This has all the different individual conversations you have going on in all of your different teams. The heart of teams is right here on the teams tab. This tab is where you can connect and collaborate with your students at any time. So teams differs from zoom on this point because of this ability to have that 24 seven collaboration in addition to their video conferencing side. So in your calendar tab is where you can see your schedule and it's linked to your Outlook account. So it's super easy to know your schedule and to be able to schedule for your next live video conference class. These last tabs are a record of all your calls and the files that have been posted across all your teams. It's just all located in one easy place. On the teams tab, we can create a team down here at the bottom. So I'll go ahead and create a new private team. The next step will be to add your students and you can add them by just typing in their names or by their emails. You can leave your students as members or you can change this if you add someone who should be an owner. Now, under each team, you can have separate channels that relate to a certain topic. So you could have a team for your math class, let's say, with a channel about a big project coming up. Under the drop down menu on the side is where you can create more channels and add all your class info for your students. When you are in a channel, you can make posts, add files, add videos, and you can even add another tab on the top with this more tab. So if there's a platform that you use frequently, you can add it in and it'll be a little shortcut for you to get there. All right. Let's schedule a class. To schedule or begin a meeting anytime, I'll head over to the calendar tab located on the side ribbon. The meet now is another option for you to start a meeting right away. But for now, let's just click on the new meeting button so that we can actually schedule the class. We can name the meeting, set it at the correct date and time, and then fill out any other details before saving. You will also need to add your students emails into the required attendees section so that they're able to receive the links so that they can join in the meeting too. Because all your students are added into your team, you can easily add the whole class with the general channel from that team that you want. If you would rather send your students a URL from a different platform, you can get this link once your meeting is saved. To get the shareable URL, just click back into the meeting details from your calendar and copy that hyperlink that's attached to join Microsoft Teams meeting. You can now share this link through a separate email, your learning management system, or just however else that you get in touch with your students. On the top of the page under meeting options, you have some extra security options that you can take a look at. 
So here I'm just going to change this last one so that I'm the only one who can present. Before your video call with your students, you will want to get familiar with the Teams interface. So when you are ready for your meeting, you can just click join. You can decide if you want your video and mic on or off to start with. When your video is on, you can choose to blur the background or set a virtual background to have a little bit of fun in your class. Now that you're in the meeting, you will see a toolbar at the bottom of the screen. The first two buttons allow you to turn off and on your camera and mic. There is a more options button that has some different settings for you to take a look at during your call. Some of the useful features here are the turn on live captions and turn off incoming video. Live captions are a useful tool for those students that you know, aren't able to have their audio turned on while they tune into class and just to help make things clearer in general. You can turn off incoming video if you don't want a bunch of distraction when your students are joining the call at different times. To share the class with your students later or to keep a copy of the lesson for yourself, you can record your session at any time. Being able to communicate with your students while you're teaching online is a necessity. So the chat feature found here makes this possible for your students to ask or answer any questions that they might have. So this helps bridge that gap from what would be happening in the classroom to what's now happening in these online classes. The last tab is for showing all the different participants that are in the meeting. You can invite others here also and see which of your students have their audio muted or not. Being able to share your screen is an integral part of an effective live class. With Teams, you can share parts of your screen, the whole desktop, and even directly open PowerPoint or other Microsoft files just right in Teams. Usually, you will just share the whole desktop so that whatever you do on the screen, your students are also going to be able to see. When you begin sharing your screen, you will see a toolbar appear at the top along with a square here at the bottom. In the square, you can turn on and off your video and audio and stop presenting or end the call. You will see a member of your class in the square. If their audio is turned on, it will be whomever is speaking. You can move this screen around or just minimize it so it doesn't block any important information. In the top bar, you have the option to pass control of your screen to another person on your call. When you are done presenting, just click Stop Presenting here. You can also share Microsoft Whiteboard because it's integrated right into Teams. So if you need a blank page for brainstorming, problem solving, or just any other further explanations, you have one handy. The Whiteboard that is integrated in Teams is just a scaled back version of the Microsoft desktop whiteboard application. If you want to use the whiteboard at full capacity, you can just open up the whiteboard application on your Windows machine and then share your screen from there. And to help with this, we wrote a short article about all the best ways to use Microsoft whiteboard because it can get a little bit overwhelming. So feel free to check it out. When you are done sharing, you can just click stop presenting and your video will resume at full screen. The ability to connect with your students at any time is a huge engagement feature for Teams. Creating a virtual background, chatting, and screen sharing are all features that Teams has to help with this. And Microsoft doesn't stop there. Soon, they will release some new features, like the ability for students to raise their hand during the class, and they'll have a participant report so that teachers can see who was in their meeting and when they joined or left the call too. With all these features, Teams makes it easier for this to happen while you are navigating through this uh, new teaching period of video conferencing. Again, I'm Sarah from Aikido and thanks for watching.